So, hi everyone. My name is Ana Paula Mello. I'm a lecturer in civil engineering department at Federal University of Santa Catarina. And today uh, we are here to talk about the second edition of the handbook Building Performance Simulation for Design and Operation. And I have the pleasure to be with both editors of the book, Ian Hensing and Roberto Lamberts. And they will talk about uh, chapter one, Building Performance Simulation, Challenges and Opportunities. Ian, yeah, can you introduce yourself, please? Yes, thank you very much, Anna Paula. It's a pleasure to be here. My name is uh, Jan Hens. I'm a professor of uh, building performance, but my, my expertise is building performance uh, simulation. And together with uh, Roberto, I'm one of the two editors for this, for the first and second edition of this uh, book. Thank you, Ian. Lambert, please. Yes. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Roberto Lambert. I'm a professor of civil engineering at Federal University of Santa Catarina, and I work together with Ana Paula. Thank you. So let's start with some questions about the book and chapter one. So first one, what inspired the, the idea for the book? Yeah, please. Well, I think the the main inspiration was that uh, when we were first uh, discussing this book, there wasn't really a book about uh, building performance simulation. So this was an idea we had for a very long uh, time. And actually, the first edition took, uh, how long was it, Roberta? Maybe four or five years before it, uh, before it uh, came together. So, and then after some time, we realized, oh, it's time for a new edition. But I think we'll speak about it in a minute, why that uh, was. Yeah, the first edition, I, I still remember that you came to visit us here in Florianopolis. Jan was here with us for three months. And then um, he got inspiration uh, about uh, doing the book, mainly uh, because there was no uh, handbook uh, on, on teaching building performance simulation available at this time. I mean, and he thought that uh, uh, taking the benefit of having all the audience, all not the audience, I mean, all the uh, professionals involved in IBEPSA uh, together with us would be, would make it a good uh, and interesting book for teaching. Perfect. And what has changed since the first edition? I was like uh, the, uh, Joe uh, Clark, he wrote it very well in his preface to the to the second edition that uh, it's sort of like a continuous, continuing developing field, building performance simulation. And one of the reasons is that, uh, that uh, int the interest in building performance is growing and there are, there are new things actually uh, happening. For, for example, connected buildings, uh, relation to building information uh, modeling, uh, more and more renewable energy systems integrated in buildings. So there are many new uh, things which uh, you know, the first edition, they were somewhere covered a little bit, but, but in our mind, not sufficiently enough. And there were several requests from re readers and also from the publisher. Can you uh, extend this? So that's, that's what we did. And that's why the, the second, edition has like 22 chapters, I think, and the first edition was uh, 14. And also the number of pages uh, grew considerably. If you compare the, the thickness of the two books. <laughs> and I think the, the second edition has thinner paper, so you can imagine it has more, has much more information. Yeah. And, and pr probably the, w one of the uh, why the improved in, in the book is uh, covering uh, not isolated buildings, but connected buildings and, and cities, because I think a lot that we, we did in the past mo model uh, isolated buildings uh, uh, has, has become to, to be a limitation of our uh, buildings inserted into cities. So I think it, many improvements in this area and, and also Building information modeling is also a, a widening uh, area that deserved more and probably in the future we'll see even more. 
so regarding uh, chapter one, uh, what uh, both of you can say, what are the main challenges and opportunities regarding building performance simulation? I think the main challenge is to make sure that we can actually model everything what needs to be uh, modeled in our, our uh, field. And the main challenge is there to do it uh, so that we can actually have confidence in the results. Yes, not to say that, you know, the results, for example, predictions are never equal to uh, reality. Yeah? But uh, we, we must be sure that uh, the predictions we make or the, or, the, or the conclusions we base on these uh, predictions are actually uh, make sense, are valid. Because you know, people will make uh, design decisions, for example, based on, on these uh, results. And that's really that's really a very important and, and a big uh, big challenge. Yeah, confidence on the results and the validation process, and you know, trusting uh, quality assurance. Uh, it's it's very important in this field because the design decisions have to be grounded in in, in evidence. So yeah, that's important. Yeah, and um, certainly in, in the light of, for example, climate change, and you know, you know, you don't know exactly how our buildings will be used. Uh, you can see it everywhere. After you think they will be used in a certain way, and two years later they're used in a different way. But and so you want buildings to be a little bit, uh, not a little bit, but quite uh, robust. So, so they. There's an enormous uh, investment in, in buildings, and you don't want these investments to be uh, wasted, basically. Yeah, and in this in this area, I mean, if we, I still have the dream to have the di digital twin of the building for for every large building uh, that could be uh, you very much used during the operation of the building to forecast uh, uh, how it will behave in the next days with with mm -hmm. the weather changing. And also uh, allowing uh, different uses of the building to be simulated very uh, uh, in a speed way. So decisions can be made to adjust the machines and the equipment that is running the building. It's the dream and it's coming through. Um, next question. Chapter one talks about VVNT. Validation, verification, and test. Yeah. Can you describe it and talk about its benefits over the full life cycle of simulation studies, please? Well, the reason in the book, almost every chapter speaks about uh, validation. But in this first uh, chapter, we try to generalize a little bit uh, more and address some important points because very often, if you even if you read paper from somebody, they say, oh, I use a validated tool, for example. I don't know, I don't have to name a name, okay? And then they say, oh, the tool is uh, validated, so my results must be uh, correct. And this is, of course, a total uh, misunderstanding because, you know, if, if your tool is correct, but you don't use it correctly, then you still have a very poor uh, results. And the other thing I find is that when you ask people about uh, validation, they very often think, oh, you know, we do an experiment in, in the lab and then we do a simulation of the same lab, lab conditions and then we are going to compare the results of, you know, your physical experiments with your simulation experiments. <clears throat> and if they are similar or the same or clo close enough, then we say, oh, it's validated. But I think there's more to validation because, uh, and that's what we try to describe in chapter uh, one, it's about Somebody, a client, or the government, or they have a they have a, a question or a, an issue, yes, and then they ask us to maybe to try to solve it and come up with a design decision or uh, some some result, and <clears throat> this whole process may or may not involve may or may not involve modeling and simulation. But let's let's say from the from the outside, what people want is that the the this, the advice we give in the end, whether that is actually valid. 
not only the internal workings of, of the tool. And so that's why this, yeah, this uh, in this uh, graph uh, here, that starts all the way on the top here somewhere with the communicated problem. That is what the, what the client actually asks. Huh? And he or she cannot, e cannot even express that in, in a question we can, we can put into a simulation model or, or address. So there starts our task. Yeah? And then it goes through this whole cycle. Uh, first of all, is this something we can do with modeling and simulation? Yeah? Or maybe we should do it in another, in another way, for example, experiment. Mentally, uh, what sort of model should should we use? How complex should that model be? And then it goes on with uh, what sort of experiments should we do in during the simulation, all to address this original question. And I find that all these uh, steps, which are around it, are very often just uh, skipped. Yeah. I see many times, I think that uh, people, they, they like a certain tool and they are looking for problems they can address with that tool. <laughs> rather, than, rather than starting from the problem or from the challenge. Yeah. And so that is why, I, why we sort of you know, focus on this uh, verification, validation and, and, and testing uh, purposes. But in general, verification is about uh, you can say that it's building the model right. Yes, and validation is about uh, building the right model. And, and, and testing is actually yeah, making, doing some uh, tests to see whether, maybe with case studies or cases or whatever, <clears throat> to see whether your model can pass that uh, test. So I think that uh, in our uh, field, we very often uh, read about validation and verification and testing, but uh, very rarely about the whole process. Yeah? And this is, I think, is really very important because it has an, an impact on the tools, but also on, on the people who actually use that uh, tool. Maybe you want to add something, Roberto? Yeah, about people use the tool. I think that that's a very uh, important point because it depends very much on the familiarity of the person uh, with the tool. Knowing the limitations of the tool and people tend to overlook this and tend to twist the tool uh, to make whatever they want to uh, to simulate and, and, and think that uh, the tool can give you the answers that sometimes it cannot give you. So understanding the limitations of the tools uh, is a very important process on, on, on the learning. Uh, yeah. And we see that people don't, don't, don't pay very much attention. They tend to get attached to a tool <laughs> and they, they use this tool for everything and they uh, overlook the, the, the part of the limitations that can some uh, wrong answers and this yeah. is uh, unfortunately quite common i mean when the tools uh, uh, improve their interfaces they get very much easier to use and and the training of the simulator uh, of the person doing the simulation is very important to make uh, a, a critical training to understand um, uh, what you can uh, do and what you cannot do. And uh, understand that uh, you have to do some validations uh, on, on your specific project uh, to understand if the uh, results are coming correctly. Yeah. And this is especially true, I think, if you think about the uh, more detailed simulations, for example, high resolution airflow modeling or high resolution uh, lighting simulation or high resolution system simulation. Yeah. So I think there are really like three different requirements you have to, first of all, you need to have the proper background knowledge. For example, under, understand how, why air flows or how lighting works or you know how 
how systems actually uh, work. And then you have to be able to actually to uh, to try to be able to to change that into a model or think about the conceptual model how it can be simulated. And thirdly, you have to have enough skills to then put it into a simulation uh, framework. So these are three different three different uh, uh, requirements, if you if you will. But first and foremost is a, is about uh, knowing about uh, having some expertise or knowledge about the field or the, yeah the background of these uh, things. So I think I know a lot. Yeah, <laughs> but I don't trust I don't trust myself doing high level uh, lighting simulations or high level airflow simulations because that's not exactly my uh, field. So I came to the conclusion that uh, after many years that. Or uh, not after many years, but that's some some things you, have, you better ask somebody else to do because they are more experienced ra rather than you know playing with the tool yourself and and getting some something which might look reasonable, but I'm totally not confident about it. Yeah, and we are talking about thousands of of variables that sometimes have to be inputted in in a simulation uh, process. And you have to be familiar with them, and uh, you have to do uh, sensitivity analysis, and, exactly. and you, you have to um, you have to test it in in many different ways to uh, to gain confidence on the results that you have. Not you don't you cannot trust the first results that you get out of a simulation. Yeah, exactly. Yes. So, what is the one thing? No one tells you about building performance in modeling. <laughs> I know it, but I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> no, I don't know. I, I don't know. Do you have something specific in mind? Because I think that, uh, especially in our bits, are then you know we are quite uh, open and we are all researchers and practitioners, so we we like to share what we already know. But on the other hand, I'm pretty sure that. Uh, there are many things we don't know yet, yeah. And this will, because, like we said in the beginning, it's a sort of like a continuous evolving field. And each time we come across uh, something, we realize, oh, this is really very important. For, for example, occupant behavior uh, in, in buildings where occupant behavior is important. <clears throat> and is this something we didn't know before? Uh, maybe we did know, but we were paying sufficient attention, and especially in this, you know, connected buildings, for example, these things become really important. Where maybe in commercial buildings before they were not so important. So well, I'm sure there will be lots of things we don't know yet. Yeah, and perhaps uh, people don't uh, normally tell you is that it's a long process of learning. Yeah, you sure. need to study a lot, and there are many different specialities, and and you tend to focus in one and or two. And but for people who are, for people who are actually looking at this uh, webinar, and I, I know for sure that uh, there is nobody in Ibiza that I know of who, who doesn't want to tell something they already uh, know, and, and that is, I think, the nice thing about the. Uh, Ibipsa, this uh, sharing of we all, we all like to share what we what we know. So. Yes. So as a future simulator, uh, what do you recommend as uh, activities? Well, I firstly recommend you to learn about let's say the field where you want to be active: lighting, airflow, systems, uh, building building uh, physics, because th that takes the longest time to actually uh, learn. Yes. <clears throat> and then also learn about, OK, what sort of models and simulation tools are there available? And, and to know that, let's say, uh, because there are many different tools and they all have their different uh, purposes. <clears throat> and then you should sort of understand for which uh, problem should I use uh, which tool? And then, of course, the third thing is to to make sure that you use these tools uh, correctly. 
So I think these are sort of like the steps to take and don't fall into the trap of uh, falling in love with a, you know, a certain tool and think, oh, I'm going to be married to this tool and etc. Do that with your partner, but not with a, not with a simulation tool. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, uh, I would advise people to uh, study the book. I mean, the chapters on the book are, are very rich in, in, in content. And we, as, as I said before, we benefit from uh, a lot of experts that we have inside the IBEPSA, International Building Performance Simulation Association. And also, uh, uh, thanks to Rajan Rawal, uh, we are building a lot of knowledge on, on the uh, YouTube. So we have a lot of videos that are available on the chapters of the book, on other books, and also on, on, on uh, we are making available the uh, videos of the uh, plenary recordings of the meetings, of the building simulation meetings. Uh, another source of information that is very important are the proceedings of the building performance simulations that are available on the IBEPSA website, IBEPSA news, and also going to the research site, the, the, the journal of building performance simulation that Jan and, and Ian uh, edit. And it's a lot of knowledge there that can help you on your simulations. So thank you both for the conversation and congratulations uh, for the book. Well, thank you, Ana Paula. Thank you, Ana Paula. <laughs>